Consistently named one of the most innovative countries on Earth, South Korea is home to a roster of tech heavyweights that have fundamentally changed the way that we live. Whether it's our electronics, it just kicks up my feet, or our entertainment, our food, oh, thank you very much, or our fashion. These are wild. The East Asian nation continues to redefine the rules of the game. From the scrappy startups and the emerging unicorns, fan art in honor of PUBG, to the seasoned conglomerates. You want to turn a car into a mobile phone? That's why. Join me on Innovate South Korea as I find out how innovation is being driven here. Korea is one of the most digitally connected populations on the planet, and one brand more than any other has come to symbolize that, Samsung. It is the global leader in sales of smart TVs and the world's number one smartphone maker. But these days, with mobile sales slowing, the Korean tech giant is now racing to find its next big thing. And we got exclusive access to see how here in the city of Suwon, just ahead of a big milestone last year, the company's 50th birthday. This is it, the headquarters of Samsung Electronics and its research and development campus. Located just a short drive south of Seoul, this is where the company is in a constant state of innovation as it tries to push into new uncharted markets. And they are giving us a rare peek inside. They call it Digital City, where some 35,000 Samsung employees work. It's got a sort of Silicon Valley college campus vibe, with parks, throngs of young people, and a massive cafeteria where everything is free. It also feels a bit like Fort Knox. Security scans everyone on the way in and out. With operating profits of nearly $50 billion in 2018, Samsung can't afford to see its corporate secrets go out the door. Thank you. Tap in here. Yeah. All right. Few outsiders are allowed to see these R&D labs. And in here, one thing is clear. This is a refrigerator. Wow. Samsung is in a constant state of crisis. At least, that's how CEO H.S. Kim describes it. We believe the crisis is our opportunity for our future growth. The innovation is, is our job. For Samsung, crisis seems to equal innovation. One of its big moments came in 2012 with the launch of this phone. That year, the Galaxy S3 topped rival Apple's iPhone 4S to become the best-selling smartphone on the planet. Profits soared. This one's 4G. Yeah, we've had that for a while. This one's In Bolden, Samsung released this ad asking viewers, why wait for another phone when the next big thing is already here? One thing that Samsung is very good at is they're very, very aggressive in the way they approach the technology space. Sometimes a bit overly aggressive, but in the grand scheme of things, it's good because it keeps them on that leading edge of technology. The company's big bet now is a 5G world of interconnected living. 5G is really about what I say is putting fiber in your pocket. You're connected to a blazing fast network, yeah. so it's instantaneous. But it's not just the person or human pockets. Now, because 5G will be about connecting things yeah. to the internet, to the world. That could be in your kitchen, living room, or even out on the road. So good to meet you. We would like to bring the mobile experience inside the vehicle as much as possible. You want to turn a car into a mobile phone? That's why. I can connect to my refrigerator yeah. right now. Here's the thing. Samsung sees a near future where cars drive themselves, and passengers, well, they'll need entertaining. Don't you think there's just too much information, you know? Too much data, too much control at my fingertips here. This vehicle shows you what Samsung can do. A 
few years ago, Samsung wasn't even a player in automotive infotainment, but by 2016, it spent $8 billion to acquire US-based Harman. And just two years later, Samsung became the world's number one distributor in the industry with about $5 billion in revenue, say analysts. Now, Samsung says this technology could be on the roads within a couple years. Thank you, Christy. <laughs> This is the lab. Yeah, this is our lab. And you're the robot guy. <laughs> right. <laughs> All the people are robot guys. Elsewhere on campus, teams are working on healthcare, a relatively new field for Samsung. Our system is not for the people who can't walk, but yeah. this is system for the people who can walk but have some problems yeah. in doing some very sound gates. So for the elderly. Yeah, right. In 2010, the company released its first medical device in a bid to turn healthcare into a new growth engine. Let's put it on. Yeah. Can I try it? <laughs> okay. Those are sensors located on my hips that measure the angles created by the distance each of my legs moves in a typical walk. Then motors lift my legs based on that personalized gait, giving my muscles a big boost. Oh, goodness. It just kicks up my feet. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, wow, that's interesting. Yeah. I'm feeling a lift at my feet, even though this is only here. Right. The team believes this could one day help elderly and disabled users with physical therapy. Samsung has its eyes on the exoskeleton industry, which analysts say could be worth nearly $6 billion over the next decade. Nearby, an engineer is developing technology to help the visually impaired see. Like a real glasses. Yeah. Yes. To show me how it works, I'm more or less blinded with these half opaque glasses. Yeah, it's very blurry. Yes. I, yeah, yes. I can't see anything. Then, given a VR kit paired with a Samsung phone and this app. Oh, I see. Oh my goodness. As soon as I put this headset on, I can see the outlines of figures. Something that was once just a milky blob has turned into something with definition. I can go from not seeing to seeing. No, th this is this is incredible. Hopefully we can, you know, help the visually impaired people feel the same joy of ordinary life that most of us usually take for granted with this. The software's algorithms help detect even the faintest outlines and also inverts colors and enhances contrast so you can see. This is all taking place in the C Lab, which Samsung opened around six years ago to encourage bottom up innovation. For executives like Kim, the lab shows that Samsung is trying to reinvent itself. Yeah, that's really good. They are creating st startup culture inside Samsung. So we want to make our culture uh, different. Samsung is racing to innovate, but not to market. In the wake of some failed product launches, including the first rollout of its Galaxy Fold in 2019, Samsung recognizes the need to balance speed with execution. As this 50-year-old tech giant looks to find its next big thing.